Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to RPT, season number eight, episode number 92. We've given y'all eight hot dozens. Yeah, man. Uh, thank you guys for tuning in. It is Wednesday, September 29th, year of our Lord, 2021. Sass, and we coming in hot, baby boy. We're going to talk about so much stuff, man, I can't wait. And we just broke the internet when we dropped these hashtag FJB shirts it's a popular phrase it's very popular many people at sporting events are saying it it stands for frijoles jarritos and buñuelos <laughs> i thought you say burritos <laughs> fuck i don't know hey if the feds come knocking we'll be like hey man that stands for frijoles jarritos and buñuelos um so yeah go check them out right now chingobling.com a lot more merch coming wait till y'all see that freedom collection sas uh, i'm on tour only a couple cities left only a couple cities left. It is the Freedom of Speech Tour. Uh, very excited, man. We headed to Dallas next. We're taking the entire familia, babysitter and all, Airbnb. <laughs> really? It's going to be like a reality show. Yeah, I'm going to be dying to get to the club. Like, can we hurry up? Can I get there early? For sure. So, Addison, Texas, October 7th through the 10th. And then San Antonio, we, be at, we, we are back. October 14th through the 16th. Raleigh, North Carolina, October 24th. Irvine, California, November 3rd, Houston, Texas, November 5th through the 7th, and um, the date's not confirmed yet, but we're doing Las Vegas. Hey. We're doing Vegas, and I think we're adding Salt Lake City, right. just so we can end a year strong, and so we drop, so when we drop La Cumbia de Fauci, it'll really go ham. <laughs> um, yo, to everybody tuning in, man, uh, as y'all know, I took a risk, uh, you know, talking about this type of shit. People gonna label you, cons- uh, what is it, conservative, conspiracy, and conspiracy theorists, and QAnon, and far-right uh, extremists, coconut, you wanna be white. Man, come on now. That's the dumbest shit I ever heard of in my life. Who would ever wanna just not be who they are? Yeah. And also, man, really, I'm about freedom, and I'm paying attention to all this um media brainwashing and stuff that's going on and it's some serious shit going on with the economy but hey i couldn't stay silent so if you guys want to support the show and y'all want to uh, keep our freedom of speech alive hit us up patreon.com forward slash red pill tamales you know people like rihanna and Nicki minaj get on the train they, they did it way after jingle bling did it let's be real yeah i'm not a mind reader so i'm not gonna say Nicki minaj is the next candace owens <laughs> Or Rihanna. First of all, Rihanna's married to a billionaire. She don't give a damn. She's damn near billionaire herself, ain't it? Pretty much. So, yeah. Yeah, off that makeup, right? Yep. Wow. I wonder what that contract looked like. Uh, and one last thing. Shell Shock CBD. Uh, when you check out, use promo code CHINGO. And that's it, man. We was about to have more commercials than Rogan. <laughs> um, so, tell me, man. You were telling me off air. You got some feedback on the newsletter. We hadn't sent a newsletter email out. Uh, shout out to everyone that's been entering their email on my website. So we can stay in touch. Yep. Um, so you blasted it off last night at nine. Yeah, yeah. So Chingo and I were, you know, we talked about this during one of our creative meetings last week about just re-engaging with that audience and people that sign up, you know, because they want to know when shows are coming around or merch or they went to a show or they bought something. And it's also like a like a secondary, like in case the accounts get banned, in case you get completely shadow banned or removed, people would know where we went, where we are. Anyway, so you and I worked on it over the weekend and we blasted it out last night. And over half of the audience, which is it's a large audience on that email newsletter, opened it. And, you know, just to be completely transparent, right, it's it's tens of thousands of people, but only like less than 100 people unsubscribed, which I was expecting. Like, how many people are going to unsubscribe because you hadn't reached out to them since last year, yeah, way yeah, before yeah. election, way before RPT, way before uh-huh. all that, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not very many people unsubscribed. And then the people that replied back to it, it was very like, it was mixed. It was the people who were like, you guys are awesome for what you're doing. Uh, I'm glad you spoke out. Keep doing what you're doing. And then the like literally two or three of them that replied uh, contrary with contrary messages were very uninformed sounding. Like they hit they hit the best all the classics with the hoaxes. They hit every hoax and said, good luck to you spreading more false information. Okay. well, here's my response. Um, I think in time you'll see that basically they did a hit job on this man. And he was our better option. I'm sorry to say it. Uh, yes, it hurt my feelings when he was, you know, I misinterpreted that shit too. You know, they bringing their problems and they're rapists. And it, I don't think he said they are rapists. Right. I think it was like they're sent, they're not sending their best. They're sending, a, like he says it all the time. They're opening up their jails. The entire world is opening up their jails and they're dumping them off on us. Right. So anyway, hey. Uh, if you do not want to follow along, that's fine. Uh, that is cool. Good for you. 
Uh, stand for what you believe in. For sure. Uh, join the I don't like Chingle Bling Club. You know, <laughs> I do not give a damn. How many billions of people on this planet, bro? Billions? That's a good question. I'm going to get, let's take a guess. I'm going to guess there's uh, 10 billion people on the planet. Yeah. So, so, so basically keep an open mind. Give me the benefit of the doubt. Um, I talk about, I mean, how many hours of content do we give y'all? Well, political content, a couple hours per week to where you can at least keep an open mind and be like, well, everything I heard Chingo say sounded, it made sense. He was talking about freedoms. He's talking about economics. He's talking about media persuasion. It's pretty much brainwashing. It's hypnotizing, but yep. we'll just call it persuasion, right? They accidentally leave stuff out and they prioritize what they want. And that's what we talk about on this show. So I am all the way 100. Uh, again, you ain't got to like me. I know my shit is fire. I know my shit is funny. Like when we hit these shows, I know the product is good. I know who I am. Uh, I think it's just a big misunderstanding. People have TDS. They hate Trump so much that anybody that would say he's better than Biden. Yeah. Oh my God, you fucking sell out coconut punk ass Republicans. They're against immigrants and they're racist and this. And you want to be white and that's white supremacy and everything is racist. And, and, and Biden's the good guy. He's for la raza and orale. And they, they're for the people and the Democrats are the good guys. And I'm like, look. Let's quiet some of that noise. Let's talk economics. Let's mm. talk your family. Are you a citizen? Oh, yeah. Okay. Do you work? You know, do you earn money to feed your family? Yes. Don't you care about the value of the dollar? Don't you want a safe community? Like, do you want all the terrorists and fentanyl coming through the southern border and women getting sex trafficked? Like, I get it. We could all be pro-immigrant, but how can you look at what's going on? I sa I've said this shit a million times. How can you honestly... The problem is I think people don't realize what the fuck going on. Sure. So, you know, how can you look at the situation at the border and be like, yeah, that seems totally sustainable. I totally think that a, a unvetted, unchecked, unsupervised, wide open, considering America's the baddest bitch. You know, every time we have a president, they call him the leader of the free world. We are number one, you know what I mean, with a, with a target on our back. So who wouldn't want to... A, come on over and take advantage. I don't, I don't blame you. But even some sinister people where I don't want to sound like Trump, but it's like, we need to know who, <laughs> what their intentions are. Hey, I'm sorry. I'm 42. I, I, I do not apologize for anything that I've ever... So two things. Uh, 7.6 billion people in the world. I was going to say seven because I, I was pretty sure that's what it was, but I was counting the, uh, the dead folk that voted that maybe they counted in the, uh, the new world population. So oh. That's, that's why I said 10. Oh, wow. 7.6, right? Also, two things. I've heard some, the second thing, I've heard somebody frame it this way, that like, it's not that America should be no immigrants. Obviously not, right? No, you need immigration. Absolutely. It just depends how much, depending on the time. And when, right? Like, when should we let people in the country? Maybe right now, during the, yeah. this pandemic, yeah, exactly. where it's so dangerous and everybody should be on lockdown, is not the best time to accept people yeah. in? Maybe just put it off a little exactly. bit? Exactly. If you were ever going to give somebody a pass... For kind of being like, we need a secure border. Like when I came out was like, hey, man, I'm siding with Trump in terms of my vote because I feel like it's our better choice. Economically speaking, peace through strength. Yeah. Didn't nobody want no smoke. I've already said all this stuff. We got a lot of new stuff to get into. But um, well, it begs repeating, though, for sure. Yeah. Like, in other words, like. You don't have to agree. You don't have to pay attention. You know, eventually this shit will affect you. Yeah. Right. Either your job is going to force you to do something or you happen to live in a state where now they're about to tax you per mile on some goofy ass shit. Or you start to notice a lot of problems in the country all at once. It's to the point where we people don't even talk about Afghanistan no more. How yeah. long? What was it? Two weeks? Max. If, it was in the news. I mean, no. How long ago? Like... There's so many crises happening. You know, we need to be talking about this debt ceiling thing. You know, we need to be talking about this economics, how much spending and spending. But all that rasa shit, I get it. I'm brown. I can't wash the shit off. Yeah. All that rasa shit, I totally understand. We love, orale. I, I feel you, bitch. Sure. I'm Mexican is in my blood. Like, we, we used to go over there all the time when I was little. Like, that's where my parents are from. It's not something I fucking forgot. I was listening to Emilio Nevada on the way here, you know? There you go. Hey, that's proof right there. <laughs> so, so, my point is, I get it. We all proud of being rasa and all this stuff. Okay, now... Let's get to business. Yes, please. Let's talk about what the fuck going on. I get it. Yes, I get it. That's your fucking, that's your identity. It's Rasa first, Rasa first, Rasa first. Okay, now can we talk about the dollar? Why did Rasa come here? We came here for the dollar. 
Yeah. Can we talk about the dollar? Can we talk about what's being spent? Or you want to be politically and financially illiterate? Like, it's cool. Like, do you want to engage in this conversation? Or you rather cancel and tune out because something hurt your feelings? But on some real man shit, on some grown man shit, not the kids table, all this stuff that's happening, the shortages... Uh, we're going to talk about how Costco um, basically made an announcement. When's the last time you heard a big retailer say, hey, man, we're getting hit with these extra costs from inflation and the price of goods, and we're about to pass it on to you, pimping. Yeah. So get ready. They te la van a dejar caer with no Vaseline. Dude, yeah, and nothing gets me more excited than when uh, I have other people that look like me reach out to me to talk about shit like this. Because as much as I like to like talk about music and video games and like nonsense, like yeah. distractions, I also really like talking about this shit. And yeah. this show is making them more inclined to research that kind yeah. of stuff. Well, we're fathers, we're husbands, we're the men of the house. Um, you know, if you break in my house, my wife might shoot you first. <laughs> You know, she keeps the ba the baseball bat on her side of the bed. No, I'm playing. She keeps the gun and the bat yeah, on her side. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm over here with the kids. <laughs> Baby, protect us. No. But, uh, we, you know, we're the men of the house, man. And I, I, all honesty speaking, like, hey, we might sound paranoid to a lot of people. Like, man, these fools up here thinking somebody really... You know, he, he he think he in a Scooby Doo episode. He thinks somebody really out for power. Ro -ro. He, you know, Ro -ro. he he this motherfucker Chingo man. He queuing out. He be thinking that uh, other countries want to take over us. You know what I'm saying? And you know, he, he thinking we want to be like we're fine, we're about to be like Canada or Australia. Well, it takes those kind of people to make the world go round, right? We have to accept that fact as well. Because the people, not everybody could be super yeah. informed because it doesn't leave time for them to do, you know, everyday things that people need to do every day. Yeah, like for example, one of the things we're going to talk about, uh, number two on the list, is uh, the Arizona audit. You know, it's one of those things where it's two movies on the same screen. The left is saying, see, the numbers that they recounted match the pre-count numbers. And, and Biden and, got more. And Biden actually got more. So he like double whooped your ass, <laughs> right? But we're going to talk about that uh, in terms of how it's being perceived by each side so today's show man we talking about trump uses a meme at a rally because he's smart like that mm -hmm. it's it's you making a joke you roasting you're communicating an idea and we're going to talk about it number two arizona audit came out let's talk about it number three woke ice cream what brand who do you think ben and jerry of course oh those motherfuckers <laughs> uh biden approval plummets again I think, if I'm not mistaken, y'all look it up. Some polls show that he's like at 20% approval with independence. That's what you sent me, yeah. With independence, mm -hmm. I, think. I think it was like 29%. Yeah. And, bro, this is like the lowest. We're going to talk about it. This is like unheard of, historic. <laughs> like, Everything we talk about is historic, literally. Every week. Biden only puts in like six hours of work per week, and he manages to cause six different crises all at once. Um, number five, New York creates chaos. Now, I got, now they got to call the National Guard and shit. Isn't that some shit? So there's a couple of videos we're going to play. One of them is, is her being crazy about the vaccine. And the other one's her just saying like, hey, uh, at midnight, all these health workers are going to get fired. So I'm going to sign an executive order to give me power yeah. to call the National Guard. Yeah, because you, you, you created this state of emergency. Yeah, let's, let's, <laughs> let's repeat that again. I, as the governor, I'm going to sign an executive order to give me emergency powers to call the National Guard. I can't wait to talk about this because when I went to high school in New Jersey, I remember them calling state of emergency one time. Why? The weather. Mm. It was a blizzard. So that's a case of like, hey, man, it's a storm. There's certain shit I need to employ, like National Guard or something. Yeah, from a natural disaster. Exactly. These people, this old substitute governor <laughs> causes the chaos and then calls the National Guard. Yeah, man. So we're going to talk about all that stuff. Um, a lot happening. A lot happening all the time, all the time. So, did you see the picture, the meme that Trump used? <laughs> Which with, one was it? It was a, it was a George Bush's face on Liz Cheney's body. Oh, uh, and th what was the phrase? What, um, dude, I don't think there was a phrase. I think it was just a picture. He went on a rant, right, about it. But then the funny part that I found was so this this executive from uh, from uh, NBC tweeted it out, right. And I want to show what, you... What'd they say? I, well, I want to show you his tweet. He's making fun of Bush. Dude. And it's like, these are the kind I of I love people, that. Yeah, for sure. Like, that, that's what I actually want in a candidate, to be I'm funny. A, yeah, I'm going to tell y'all why. I, I, there, I love it on many, many levels. Okay. There's so many levels. He's playing like 4D chess right now with this meme. People hate it when you say <laughs> so, he's playing 4D chess and 3D chess. Yeah, I know. I know. I know. I know. Uh, I kind of cringe when I said it. But 
But what I mean is, for example, he's communicating to the world. He's letting people know, hey, bro, check this out. You got these bullshit Republicans. They've been fucking y'all over. They're elitists. A lot of them are warmongers. They're globalists. A lot of them want open borders. They're just for the corporate people. And when people say that to me, like, oh, you want to be Republican? Hold on, man. I don't like identifying too much right. with teams because that team alone has so many connotations, right? <clears throat> so he's communicating, hey, y'all, there's rhinos like Liz Cheney by using her hair, whatever, and George Bush. You know, he's basically saying, oh, my God, look at this photo. <laughs> <laughs> but look what, so this is an NBC exec. Mike Sing, what is it, Singleton? Singleton. Sing Singleton. Trump sent this photo out from his, quote, office of Liz Cheney and President Bush cropped together. Yes, this actually came from a former president of the United States, not a teen boy in his parents' basement, the same man who had access to the nuclear codes. Shut your little <laughs> bitch ass up, bro. Let's go to his profile oh, real quick. Oh, what's, cuck ass, What's in boy? his bio? Let me see the pronouns, Pimpin'. Does he have them? Uh, senior executive of NBC Universal, Hollywood's ultimate insider, entertainment, pop culture, blah, 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 blah. Lifestyle expert? Blue check mark. Anyway, cool opinion, bro. He doesn't understand what's happening here. He's taking offense as this is unpresidential behavior. The media on the left, let me just give y'all a persuasion lesson. The media on the left, remember... They paid their bills so good when Trump was in office. Oh, yeah. So anytime he opens his mouth, he's keeping them in business. Because motherfuckers are obsessed with, with this dude. And he knows how to attract attention. And he's like, like an energy vampire. Like, he'll make the energy shift. Like, he'll, like, you try to throw a loaded question at him, he'll fucking catch that grenade and toss it right back at your ass. So he's basically letting people know, you got bullshit rhinos, and you got these... Uh, America first, MAGA type, more uh, working class, populist economics. Yeah. You feel me? So I, lo I love that he did that. Number one, it brings attention to what he's doing. Like you almost have to, it's almost like you talking shit. The fact that he is a former president, mm -hmm. he's getting your attention. He's basically drawing a line in the sand like, hey, uh, George Bush, you over there, remember on 9-11, some shit he was it, you know, he bitch, this happened on your watch. Yeah. With y'all's intelligence agencies. Um, he on 9-11, he did the speech where he basically said these January 6th people are kind of like the Al Qaeda. You know, I never went back. <laughs> we talked about that briefly because you 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 mentioned it. Uh, I didn't go back and hear the whole thing, but I just kind of read the headline and I was like, I really don't want to read this. Like it doesn't yeah. it's not gonna be worth my fifteen or ten minutes or whatever of reading his speech. Uh-huh. It would just seem like purposeful right like and rogan was talking about that with that guy he had recently um patrick bet david he's that guy that you and i referenced a long time ago he does his, uh, his show value oh yeah 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 uh -huh. yeah so he had they talked i don't know if you listened to it yet but they talked a lot about politics and a lot about you know world views and rogan and or rather uh trump and obama and all that and it was just a lot of interesting points where like this guy's out of office right so to him it's like who cares whose side he's on like he could go be best friends with obama because he's technically never going to be president again right now he's just painting or doing whatever the hell so it's like, it's funny to see what people would do in opposition of Trump, despite being on the same party, as they say. Uh, what do you mean? It's trying to see what people would do in, despite of to Trump? Yeah, to vilify him, even though they're supposed to be a part of the same affiliation. Well, th here's the thing, though. I think that's partly what Trump's trying to communicate, meaning, hey, man, he's a globalist, bro. Yeah. And they're part of the Purple Party, the Uniparty, the elitist. It, it's it, like, for example, what Steve Bannon be saying, a uh, Jack Posobiec be saying, he's like, it's not about uh, what do they call it? Corporate capture. Mm -hmm. It's not that it's not that Bush, for example, or Cheney necessarily sold us out to China. Mm -hmm. They're calling it merger, meaning the one percent of China, the CCP, the rich elite that run everything. And then our rich elite that run everything, our one percent, they pretty much got like a, a merger. It's like, hey, man, we often to come up off this thing you scratch my back i scratch yours yeah so it's kind of like anybody want trump to win fuck no he's gonna give more power to the people he's gonna call out the media all the shit y'all didn't like he's gonna say all the real shit that the medicine you don't want to take like we cannot afford to have a wide open door on our southern border like you got more caravans coming like y'all putting people in humanitarian crisis y'all letting in you're creating a situation where who controls the border? 
The cartel controls the border. That's what y'all have created with this woke feel good. And I know I miss it. They can't deport us all. I fucking spent lots of years and, you know, I've made billboards, an album, a comedy special, all kinds of shit, you know, with this whole sentiment. But the fact of the matter is when you overload it the way it is right now, the only people winning are the bad guys, the sex traffickers, who loses? The kids, the women, the Haitians that had to sell everything. That's a really good way to put it, actually. I don't know if we've ever dis- distilled it to that phrase, like the only people winning are the bad guys. Are the bad guys. Yeah, it's, it's almost as if it's... I'm not going to allege that the cartel could pay off an American president, but, I mean, it's almost like you gifted them the border. Well, you know, it's funny. When, when <laughs> this you, for you. When you have a guy like this in office where everybody just so openly says that somebody else is controlling it, right? You don't necessarily... They wouldn't have to pay off a u.s president all they would have to do is pay off his handlers pay off his ha- uh-huh yeah exactly the cabal a couple politicians i mean in general their overall can we at least establish this people watching i get it anybody that's like considers yourself democrat or on the left and i know i've said this before can we agree that the level that the border is at right now arguably is not sustainable and it's creating a situation where the only people winning are the bad guys the sex traffickers the fentanyl dealers like we are not in control um if i'm not mistaken some of the haitians were quoting i know y'all got to double check this were quoted saying y'all's border was easier to get into than uh, honduras and el salvador and all these other ones we crossed mexico i didn't see that yeah somebody looked that up i don't know uh because you know there's a lot of fake shit out there and also, you know, we're not experts on any of this stuff. We're just, we're trying to talk about it as, as real as possible, the way that somebody who's listening would talk to maybe a friend or an acquaintance about it. Asylum, okay? To my understanding, when you're seeking asylum, you're supposed to go to the next nearest, safest place. Mm-hmm. Not travel up another country or countries or even travel continents <clears throat> to get to the United States. And furthermore not already be granted asylum in Chile, in Chile or Brazil. Now you want a better asylum. Right. (laughs) Hold up. Hold hold on, Pimpin. But hey, again, a lot of folks on the left, they not even really paying attention. They not even... Some people are paying attention to MSNBC. Well, yeah. They getting the fucking leftist, uh, super progressive, depending on what channel. You either getting CIA info or FBI info. (laughs) You feel me? Like, I, I hate to tell y'all, but we're going to keep it more real. I, you know what I'm saying? Rogan, yeah. Rogan's going to keep it more real. Even Tim Dillon going to keep it more real. I know he rubs a lot of people the wrong way, but shit. Some of the shit he says is like, come on now. Like, as a comedian, it's his job to take, like, the weird take, the mm-hmm. hot take, you know, and try to defend it. But, I mean, the, the quote-unquote unpopular opinion is, yeah, motherfucker, we cannot have gaps in the wall. Yeah. What's the point? And also, you know, I know a lot of the listeners are from Texas. <laughs> Obviously, we're from Texas. But paying more attention to what's going to happen here is going to be not like all we talk about, but a lot of what we talk about, right? With the governor's election coming up next year, we're going to have our, our uh, uh, county commissioner, whatever judge. Bro, bro, school board in October. All this stuff. All this stuff is super important because I was, so I went through, I was doing a little bit of research on some topics for today and for Friday and stuff. And I was like, you know what? Let me go back and see what the presidential map look like for texas just how the state voted right so states the, the state still went unanimously to trump like 52 i think 53 percent which is not a ton but it is a ton if you go by like how many hundreds of thousands of votes that was but my my uh mind was where did the big counties vote right where did hidalgo where did county and you know a Dal- dallas and harris and all the fort Bend, all this and a lot of them man all, not all all of them were unanimously for biden uh uh-huh. you talking about Houston area all, ones? All the big, all the big cities, all, all the, the big, big counties, counties, all the big counties. Yeah, like okay. the the state is literally like a sea of red, and then you get down here, and it's like border towns were pretty blue. Uh, all these big, the Houston, the fourth biggest county in the nation, or fifth biggest county in the nation's all blue. Border town still blue? It was for 2020. I know we've like a lot has happened from January. Mm. This is all like just as of November, right, or oh, December. Okay. I know a lot happened from January to now, but all those things are things that us as like Texas residents are going to really want to pay attention to. You're talking to. about presidential? or you That talking was about- presidential, yeah. Oh, okay, because remember, McAllen has a red mate. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And other like officials, congressmen, they, they, you know, they didn't, the Democrats didn't win any seats, any house seats. It was all Republicans. But nonetheless, people, you know, if you consider people that are moving in from other states, like how are they going to vote? Like what are they also getting their communities to think and, and believe or whatever? Yeah. Yeah, man. Uh, you know, America's pretty divided. 
It is, and um, we're not trying to divide it more here on the show, but let's just put it this way. If if any state was to say, hey, we're going to write up a declaration of secession or whatever, it's going to be Texas. It's, it's going to be one of the places where it's going to be the easiest to to convince people to, to do away from the from the United States. I think New Hampshire wants to as well. There's like a movement. There I'm is. Uh, I think it's like the, the free freedom. staters. Yeah, the free, free people or free staters, uh-huh. but they have like less than a million people. Mm-hmm. So I don't know. Yeah, I think they're like libertarian or some shit like that. But so, yeah, man, in summary, Trump is a genius for using a meme at the rally. Oh, yeah, that's what we're talking about. Yeah, Trump is a genius for using the meme at the rally. Um, it gets people excited. It gets his, you know, his base fired up. It, it, again, it, it's, it's super, super genius. It's persuasive. It's entertaining. Yeah. It's funny. It gets people's attention. It has them talking about you. And it communicates, bitch, shots fired. Basically, fuck all y'all, motherfucking rhinos, y'all full of shit. You know what I'm saying? Like, he's calling them out, bitch, y'all not America first, y'all not MAGA. Y'all ain't with this MAGA, you heard? So, uh, Arizona Audit, uh, perfect segue. It is. Can you uh, go to your Twitter and look up the at Maricopa County? Did you read their thread by chance? Well, I already know that they're playing um, uh, damage control. Severe damage control, but you know, if we want to try to be, uh, you know, fair to them, I guess we should at least read read what their claim was, their bottom line claim. Yeah. So I, if I'm not mistaken, they're they're on the side of they don't want to decertify, basically, right? As as I'm about to read it. Mm-hmm. Um. So the word on the street, on these conservative streets. Yeah. The word these clean streets. The word on these conservative safe streets uh, with with this law and order. These clean conservative streets. <laughs> clean. Ain't no homeless in these conservative streets. Yeah, hey man, that's a that's a shirt right there. Clean conservative streets. You heard me? I represent them clean conservative streets. Anyway, uh, the word is that it was leaked info. It was an early draft of the poll. I mean, not, um, the recount, whatever canvassing results. That got leaked out to the media. And then the media was able to hurry up and jump on it and be like, aha, see, the pre-count votes match, the post-count votes, and Biden even got a little couple extra votes as we got to taking a closer look. But the argument is that was all based off the leak, incomplete thing. So in other words, if you count a stuffed ballot box full of fake votes, you can recount it as many times as you want. Even though how many of these arrived after voting was over, they magically appeared. Like, I think that was 17,000. How many thousand? It was like 30-something thousand were issued from previous addresses where the person don't even live no more. So it's like, did they really vote? Or did somebody just get your little info and sign some bullshit? Okay, okay. I didn't know that. So before you get to any of these tweets, I'm going to play this quick uh, video of... So Ivory Hecker, the the, the Mm -hmm. Fox reporter, she's been doing a lot of her own independent journalism, right? And I saw this just as I was pulling up, or when I pulled up to the to the studio here. I think it's connected to the board. You just listen to it. Okay. What is the real deal on the results of the Arizona audit? After the media kind of glossed right over it, spouted out just the numbers on the hand recount and left it at that when it was an immense amount of information covered in a three-hour hearing on Friday. That entry says that someone went into the program and clicked on something that said, I want to purge all the results for this election, to run something that would clear all records in the system that was used to generate the official results the day before an audit started. The timing of this uh, becomes a bit uh, suspect. We have captured screenshots of Maricopa County people at the keyboards during those time periods. Okay. Yep, screenshots of the people at the computer because they were using shared passwords. Mm. So um, I think regardless of, of whether you identify as liberal, conservative, Republican, Democrat, I think everybody should be concerned and should want some accountability, some, some integrity, some like transparency, like make elections auditable. Don't because our current form is, well, the, you know, the, the electronic the machine. Yeah, the electronic machine people don't give you access. The people from the county don't give you the routers. You can't do an audit because... They're destroying stuff, deleting stuff. They tampering with shit before they hand it over. And then they're not cooperating. If you didn't cooperate in a corporate audit, you can go to jail. If your business is being audited and you're just kind of lollygagging, not really cooperating, you can go to jail Mm -hmm. for like obstructing with shit, right? 
why is it that in a political audit where they're trying to not recount recount is different these people are doing a forensic audit so a recount you could do a thousand recounts you're just counting whatever is there and whatever the fucking thing says well are you going to verify signatures no we're just recounting Okay, are you going to go in and do a canvas? Are you going to go to these addresses and, and be like, hey, excuse me, did Maria vote from here? Are you Maria? No. Oh, Maria. Ain't no Maria live here. Okay, thank you. So nobody here voted under the name Maria. No. You know what I'm saying? Like, I think it was uh, Biden's, um, what was that man's name, bro? Um, Department of Justice, mm. Merrick Garland. Mm. The DOJ arguably has been weaponized to intimidate people and say, if y'all in Arizona... Y'all want to do this canvas and bullshit in all these other counties? We putting cases on you motherfuckers. That's what the DOJ said. He came straight Denzel Washington. I'm putting cases on all you canvassing motherfuckers. Because people like Dr. Peter Navarro, he says, it's the canvas, not the count. That's his little slogan. It's mm. the canvas, it's not the count. So fuck the count. It's like, we know how y'all trick people. We know how y'all play these games. It, it was very convenient for this mail-in stuff. It was very convenient for like the right amount of votes to be generated after election times and then shared passwords and very hackable. Um, so I think the moral of this whole story is like we really, really, really need to like think about it, bro. America is the number one country in the world, arguably, right? We're the shit. We're, we're a beautiful country, lots of freedoms. You know, you got freedom of speech and right to bear arms and all this stuff. And, you know, we're a superpower. We got great economy. Our president is the leader of the free world. Don't you think our elections should be like a fucking badass vault where it's like, hey, man, ain't nobody. Fin you, you're not going to just fuck us over by infiltrating us, attacking us via our little system where you finding loopholes and shit like, oh, pandemic? Okay, mail it in. Like, and don't get me wrong, I'm pretty sure both sides probably want to cheat from time to time. Well, if I'm you ain't sure, cheating, you ain't trying. So I guess really the question is, okay, well, how do the Republicans cheat? Because we know how the Democrats cheat. That's kind of what I'm trying to tell y'all is yeah. something's very fishy. You know, uh, Maricopa County is only one county of many in Arizona. And they found, arguably, I know we're on big YouTube, text platform yeah. and all this many people have alleged that up to 50,000 plus uh votes you kind of got to go in there and be like wait what happened here what this what's this signature like really going into the nitty-gritty of like that's a lot of votes bro and the margin of defeat was like 10,000 yeah so regardless of who your candidate is regardless of who your party is i believe and i agree with the idea that America's the baddest bitch. We have to really take a look under the hood and make sure that there's anything we could tighten up, right? There might be some systems and some things we might need to update and not to give anybody an unfair advantage to fucking hack us. Yeah, and more of this will unfold, I guess, as the week goes on, but without having to... Because the thread for Maricopa County is super long, but the claim was, you know, one of the claims was 23,000 mail-in ballots voted from a prior address, right? Their bottom line, this is all caps, bottom line... Cyber Ninja still doesn't understand that it is legal under federal election law to label it critical concern of critical concern is either intentionally misleading or staggeringly ignorant. Arizona senators should also know this too. That's what their claim was. And then they go on there to, to and the explanation is literally like 12 tweets long. But uh, they go on to talk about meta, uh, military overseas, uh, people that, you know, moved just before the election. You know, it's not illegal to move. Different states. Yeah, or even within, but another county, or with the same county, but, you know, different... Loopholes, right? All kinds of... They dude. changed up all the little rules. So... A dude named Mark Elias. If you really want to go through, it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten different tweets with their explanation, and the conclusion is, the appropriate conclusion to draw from this finding is that it is early voting um, is that the early voting team was preparing their statutory required responsibility by reviewing signature on all return mail and ballots back with additional fact checking in an hour. Oh, that was what they said. So here are some people. If y'all haven't been keeping up, here are some people. So that was Maricopa County's kind of like, hey y'all, uh, cyber ninjas, y'all tripping, right? Yeah, y'all don't know what's y'all's little audit. Mm -hmm. You know, y'all y'all got a little frauded. Now you have people on the other side, where I, I believe she's um 
a state senator, Wendy Rogers, Colonel Wendy Rogers. She's one of the main people spearheading the movement to decertify. She has over a million signatures on, on the decertification thing. And she wants to have other counties in Arizona also do the same thing. And she believes like all 50 states, which we're seeing Texas. Ooh, wait till they look into Harris County. <laughs> right here where we at. Dude. <laughs> Boy, all kind of roaches and shit. It's gonna be rats. Well, the county this big, dude. I mean, you can't you can only imagine the discrepancies. Man, it's corrupt, bro. It's gonna be all kind of motherfucking snakes, roaches, beetles, all kind of shit. You already see the Houston Chronicle. They are over here quoting Lena Hidalgo. To be looking into our votes is just further proof that white supremacy is alive and this is Trumpism. It is very concerning and alarming that white people want to come to Harris County and recount votes. Look, this that was is, her. This is yeah, that was her and this is me talking now, not Chingo Blink. No, that was Lena Hidalgo. <laughs> that was that was Chingo Blink quoting Lena Hidalgo because yeah. that was her, right? So, she won this uh this down ballot whatever position back in 2000, I think 18, 19. And at 27 years old, I'm not saying that you can't be an intelligent person who could mean well and actually know enough to put good things in motion or at least be a voice to somebody. Yeah, because like, uh, what's his name from Turning Point? He's only like 20. Charlie? Yeah. yeah. yeah cool. Is he really? I think so, man. Big old, young looking old motherfucker. Look, he's huge. I've never seen him in person. But old looking young motherfucker. He really does, yeah. <laughs> he looks like an old president in like a younger times. I mean, shit. Yeah, but go on. So, no, yeah, yeah. so... It's not about, you know, that she's Latina or that she's uh, young or anything. It's just that I don't I don't think I've ever seen her sit down and have like a really good, com- not even a debate, but just a conversation about these things she supposedly ran on, right? Like climate change and social justice reform or, you know, um, criminal justice reform or any of these things. It's all, it, to me, just real quick, you know, on top, off the top of my head saying, I'm young, I'm a Latina. I was on the cover of Time magazine with these other, you know, motivational, inspirational Latinas or people, the women in power. And now I got this power and I'm just going to enforce whatever the fuck I want, honestly, without really hearing what other constituents want, especially if they're on the opposing side, you know, the opposing party. It just when when that shit comes down to it next year, like from literally now to like next December, we're going to be talking about that all her stupidity, all of the mistakes, in our opinion, that she's made and hope that enough people turn out to actually vote and not just let somebody win a down ballot election. Let let me know when we vote for that. (laughs) Yeah. I will. Also, I want to keep an eye out on this uh, student, um, what is it called? School board? School board, yeah. It's the October. I need to look. That's Harris County? Y- yeah, if I'm not mistaken. Yes, yeah, very important. But um, but yeah, Lena, Lena trying to be like ALC or something. She's just using the, I'm Latina, I'm young, whatever. I'm on social media. I'll be tweeting and shit. But what I don't like, like you said, you know, reiterate what you said is, um, very lefty, super progressive. We it's just like, nah, man. How you you're against us looking into our election systems? Like, don't you think it's kind of important? Why are you so threatened? What's the big fucking deal that you got to turn it into racism? And and this is just uh, she she said, um, uh, what did she say? Uh, her, what, Texas is being run from Mar-a-Lago. <laughs> That's what she said, bro. Look. Texas is as red as it gets, right? And has been for a long time. And they won. And they have more seats. And the blue didn't win no seats. And the president won this state. And still, that side, if you just want to go blue and red, red still said, hey, let's go ahead and check this shit out. Yeah. Uh-huh. Audit all 50. God so damn it. So, yeah. So, the Arizona audit thing, don't 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 get it twisted. Um, they're reporting it different ways. So, like I said, it's the canvas, not the count. Um, sure, Maricopa County can kind of cover their ass. Like, well, this is this ain't illegal. Which also is a GOP ran state, I think. Air, uh, Arizona, yeah, it's pretty fucking red. And same thing, like in Georgia, the Republican governors yes, they be yes. in on the shit. So y'all keep an eye on it. It's very interesting. Now, what the fuck do Ben and Jerry's do now? Okay, all right, we're gonna get to Ben and Jerry's because I thought uh, I don't know if I put it on the list, but your boy uh, Newsom doing the universal mail in ballot permanent in California. <laughs> Goofy ass shit. They can't undo that. N- he somebody can, but oh. he's you know if Larry Elder would have won, one he could have. But mm. as far as as it goes right now, it's permanent for all elections, mail and ballots. Well, hey, only. Um, keep an eye on California. But if that's your safe haven, go there. If that's what you want, why why yeah. try to turn other states like that? If that is the yeah. safe haven and the place yeah. to be, that's why I'm down to secede, bro. <laughs> I, I am not tripping, bro. Like, 
No, seriously, like we should literally, if this is all like a science experiment, we should literally keep an eye on California and see if this uh, tax per mile shit goes through. And, le- and um, let's see how these mail-in ballots work out for y'all. And let's see how Newsom works out for y'all. Yeah. Right? So it's going to be a cool experiment. So what? Is, so Ben and Jerry's. Yeah. So Representative Cory Bush, and this is going to be a really good example, Chingo, of what we've been talking about for the, almost a year now, about how media spins certain stories, right? So she teamed up with, or Ben and Jerry's teamed up with her to, uh, to release this new flavor, right? The new flavor is called, um, let me look it up real quick. I have, I have one from Newsweek, all right? Or no, uh, I have the St. Louis Post. Uh-huh. And then I got the New York Post. Okay. So two different writings on this ice cream. <laughs> but basically, uh, the People's Response Act, no, that's, that, this is what she was introducing. It was like legislation that they were getting behind. But um, it's got a picture of a chick painting and it's like liberty uh or change is brewing is the name of the ice cream change is brewing and cory bush is that proponent of defunding the police and replacing with social workers and remember she, we played the video about a month or two ago about like so i spent two hundred thousand yeah. dollars on private security private security so what yeah yeah, yeah exactly <laughs> goofy so the st louis post wrote this article if you guys want to go look it up it's a st louis post dispatch it's a uh, cory bush inspires new ben and jerry's flavor right so it should have been called no mamas. So <laughs> the change is brewing flavor begins with, you know, ice cream, uh, marshmallow swirls. The coffee is supplied by Black and Bold, a black owned company that uh, donates a portion of the supports to the risk youth. Fudge brownie is supplied by Greystone Bakery, which uh, hires employees without asking about criminal records or drug use. The, the list goes on, right? It's very like up all the ingredients. Yeah. All well, not only the ingredients of the ice cream, but the ingredients for why it's such a good collaboration in a good message. I'm going to shift over now to the New York Post. The New York Post writes, a portion of the proceeds for sales of the flavor called Change is Brewing will be donated to grassroots groups calling for transformation of public safety in America, according to Ben and Jerry's. Uh, and, a customer, and when customers navigate to the Ben and Jerry's site to buy ice cream, they are urged to join the movement for Black Lives in support of Black Response Act. So then they go further into how this is going into a defund the police initiative in replacing them with social workers, something that the St. Louis Post mentioned nothing about. All they mentioned was about youth, kids, mental health. That's it. Okay. Now, without boring you for the rest of it, it's really interesting because the, the person that was helping with this was Ben and Jerry's, uh, the company U.S. Activism Manager, so Ben and Jerry's activism manager was with Cory Bush and Ben and Jerry's at the release of this last week. So I just wanted to throw that all out there on the table for you to kind of ponder over. So Ben, ben and Jerry, the original owners, they had always been pretty progressive, lefty hippies. Yeah. And then they sold to Unilever, right? Mm-hmm. Was it the Unilever company? I forget how much, $300 billion, something crazy, Three hundred. I don't know what it was. It was a shit ton of money. But I think they're still on the board or they still get to like participate in like calling those kind of shots. You know what I mean? Yeah, they said they have a, their quote is, our board has complete governance over social mission, of, over the social mission of the company. Yeah, so I mean, if you're a lefty Larry and you already think cops are bad, social workers should be able to do the job of cops. And if you already watch MSNBC and agree with all those things, it probably sounds like a super cool thing. You know what I mean? Like. Mm-hmm. Like, um, you know, if you already just believe fake stats about police brutality or, or whatever. And, and don't get me wrong. If cops were to turn into these people who overall they just start enforcing tyranny, like what you see in, in Australia. Australia and Canada and all that, I think that's going to be more a job for the national police well you know know. i think that's in my opinion that might be something that comes here because we've seen a lot of you know medical workers getting let go right ain't that capital police ain't that what they're trying to do uh probably but the example i was going to use was that the more people that because a lot of officers are resigning because they you know because of the mandates if you get rid of all the people that are willing to just stand for what they believe and stand for what they believe is wrong or what are you left with a bunch of lefty larry cops pretty much that are like i'm just doing my job and then you're hearing the same thing of what you're hearing in australia all the like, so let me ask you this: Did they ever do some type of purge in the Australian police force? And do they have a national police? Or who are these? All just local city cops? Ah, uh, that's a good question. I think so. I think they're just. I don't know if they have a national police. Okay, because I th- I know Mexico like Los Federales or some shit. I don't know. I think they're kind of like a national police. Mm. I don't know, but throughout history. 
that shit's scary. Yeah. Because you had the Stasi in Germany. Um, because think about it. If you all of a sudden have like a, a, a police force that does all the bidding for the federal government. Yeah. And they just overstepping and they all up in your grill. You know what I'm saying? Like you living in a state where it's like, well, I got my state cops and the, the highway patrol and the DPS and the, and the sheriffs and the cops, city police. And now you got these folk. You feel me? Yeah. Um, this isn't on the list, dude, uh-huh. but uh, somebody sent me a, a, a video just before I got here, too, of a quarantine camp going up in Washington, like the one in Australia. Did you see it? I had heard about that bullshit on, on think, on TikTok or something like that. <laughs> so then <laughs> this person, this listener also went, went ahead and sent me the job listing. So there's a, you know, like the government website that lists like the job openings. Uh, hold on. General Milley admits leaking to book authors about Donald Trump. That just that was reporting right now, forty seven seconds ago. But uh, Millie Millie be tripping, tripping like a motherfucker, man. Millie Vanilli. Oh, careers.wa.gov. So in Washington. So I didn't know what to expect when this popped up in the United States, right? So if you saw that, you know, because the headlines are going to read Washington builds, you know, quarantine camps or whatever. What's the first thing that that you would think? Because it's probably the first thing I thought, and I'm sure that this is what people, this is how they get them scared, right? Well, if you just saw that, like, tomorrow morning you wake up having a cup of coffee and you see Washington State, you know, breaks ground on uh, quarantine camps. Well, for one, it, I'm assuming it'd be a right-wing type of publication. Probably. It, is it? Okay. No, this is for Business, business Insider that I, that I saw it, but I'm actually on the, the website for the job posting. Because I, I had to go through it because it's pretty long, but I wanted to read what it was. That, what, what were they trying to accomplish with it, right? Uh-huh. So, not to set you up any further, it's just people, not people that live there, but people that are traveling to there. If you test positive, that's where you're going to go for 10 to 14 days. Mm. That's kind of the gist of it. Which is like, like, like if you're a Texan and you're flying into Seattle mm-hmm. and you test positive, mm-hmm. they put you in a government. Yes. Okay. For 10 to 14 days. Sounds like Canada. <sighs> It sounds shitty, man. And they, they really fluff it up to be like, you know, there's nurses on staff. Uh, they, they chauffeur you where the driver has ventil- like special ventilation from the vehicle to wherever you need to go and blah, blah, blah. And it's just like, wow, they're really, really trying. They're really reaching to make you feel as comfortable as possible having Big Brother do everything for you, take everything away from you, and you not complain about it at all. And be able to say, hey, sorry, but I know normally... Anything else? You, I mean, obviously, if you had Ebola or fucking measles, they'd, they'd probably put you in a special area of a hospital, maybe. But it's one of those, like, I know normally we do things a little different, but this is a pandemic. And I know you're probably like, hey, dude, I don't want to go to some weird camp because I'm, you know. But hey, man, you know, it's like we're the state of Washington and that's how we're doing things. And it's like, whoa, wait a minute. The state is telling me. It's almost like you put me in jail. Mm-hmm. It's like, you're telling me I can't go home. It's like, yeah, but it's a pandemic. It's like, okay, I feel you. I feel it. Rogan beat it in a weekend. De La Hoya beat it. Chris Rock beat it. You know what I'm saying? Tim like, Dillon's beat it three times. God damn. <laughs> I don't know what the fuck he be doing. But he's a model of health. <laughs> I know, right? Like, I don't know. I don't know. Call me paranoid, but it's like, wait a minute. We didn't used to have camps where the government could say, nah, bitch, you tested positive. Trust me. Come with us. And you said measles and <laughs> Ebola and all that shit. Like, people have been making this point, too. Like, why don't you ask people for those vaccination cards? And what's the answer? Well, because that vaccine actually worked. Uh, is there an Ebola vaccine? I'm pretty sure, yeah. Uh, I don't know. But I do know that the reason Ebola doesn't spread as easy as Corona is because it kills the host too fast. So... Is that, is that the argument? I think that's part of it. Okay. I think that's part of it. It's not as contagious. I'm just going to look at it real quick. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Remember, we had a few cases of Ebola in motherfucking Dallas. Did we? Yeah. We and did we, so and did we shut down? No, that was like a few years ago. But like, did they shut down everything? No. Because it's like, well, not everybody's going to catch this punk ass Ebola. We didn't make it in the lab. Or did we? Mm-mm-mm-mm. First FDA approved vaccine to prevent Ebola virus. So they got a vaccine for Ebola? Yeah, it was actually approved in 2019. Hmm. I wonder where you get those at. At the COVID, at the free COVID vaccine place? <laughs> <laughs> at McDonald's? 
<laughs> CVS. Can I get a hot and spicy and not a bowl of vaccine? For sure. Y'all still got the meatballs? No? Okay. Oh, yeah. So, so, so yeah, man. Uh, we started talking about Ben and Jerry. Now yeah. We, now we're talking about Ebola. Yeah, yeah. But um, Same thing. Yeah. So, <laughs> so, basically, I mean, I guess the argument is this. If you agree with all the stupid shit Corey Bill should be talking about, then you're probably going to feel very good about Ben and Jerry's and their ice cream. You know, it's like, they're like, hey, we don't want all the customers. Yeah. We just want the woke ones. Yeah. People that think that, you know, I mean, it sounds good. It's like, okay, black owned coffee and this other ingredient where they hire ex-cons and people with felonies or whatever. And all that shit sounds cool because you helping out little businesses and stuff. It sounds like a pain in the ass from the business side. Like you having to source all these different things and deal with all these little small businesses. Spoken like a true capitalist. Like, give me the easy way to just like, make a shit. Can I just money. cut you a check? Yeah. Because right. I'm going to use my fucking coffee beans. You know what I mean? We ain't going to be going back and forth with 33 ingredients. But these shit. people like Corey Bush and, um, I mean, I guess people could say the same thing about Ted Cruz, but I don't care. I'm not picking sides here. Let's just say you got AOC, you got Corey Bush, you got, uh, what's the other black lady from California that's super outspoken? Maxine Waters. Maxine Waters. All these people. Ayanna Presley went down there to the border. All these people who are making uh local issues they they, they're bringing bringing them to the national stage does that make sense like when you run for congress in your state whether you're dan crenshaw whoever it is wesley hunt you know who barely lost his 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 uh bid or whatever you run on these local issues and you go to people like chingo bling and myself and you talk about what you're going to do for your area and your state and your communities and then they go to dc and they start you know trying to implement these local issues on the national stage and then throw a blanket across the united states and say well, we're going to do this for every state because you know this is what what whatever st louis wants so cory bush is going to go rah rah about defunding police everywhere because here in st louis this is what my constituents want supposedly right mm. whereas it's not she's really like, your she's, role she's like this is what george soros wants i mean <laughs> exactly <laughs> but you know what i'm saying like these people get they get so much they just basically power trip you know, once they get the bid and they go up to D.C., it's just like, I can say and do whatever I want. Well, yeah, because especially if you're a Latina female, you can get how much, how many opportunities and media opportunities and you then become a politician slash brand. What Lena Hidalgo is trying to do. Yeah. You know, I'm, I'm a speculator. Right? I'm not a mind reader. But I'll speculate with you. But she's terrible. She's yeah, not very yeah. well-spoken. She's can't form. She's almost like a young uh, Joe Biden. Like when she talks, it's just like whack-ass ideas put together with like real low energy. Yeah, I don't, I don't, I'm not familiar with too many of her ideas, but I know she was like very pro lockdown. She's always like, it's too many cases. We need to really start tampering down with the freedoms. Yeah, one of the articles I read was like... Um, when it comes to the pandemic, you know, I'm paraphrasing, uh, Lena Hidalgo, you know, politicizes a pandemic to crush, you know, whatever, you know, I don't know, GOP fucking something shitting on Republicans. And all because, you know, Governor Abbott was kind of following suit with whatever DeSantis did, like we would kind of do it second, which was be free, be open, remove mandates. She was like, you're killing Texans. <sighs> like, does she not factor in, like, what do you like? Can we afford to shut everything down? Right? Mm. I get it. It's a global pandemic. I understand a lot of people dying. I mean, I hate when people say, like, you care more about the economy than lives. You know, like, motherfucker, what is the economy? Well, the economy is going to affect lives. It is lives, basically, yeah, right? If, if people lose their job, lose their company, lose their assets, lose their ass, lose their check, <laughs> lose their money, lose their house shit lose generational yeah houses you, in some you cases. setting people all the way back and it's like okay well let them go to work if they want like no because you know you're affecting me now it's like bitch stay in your basement yes but hey you know i know we sound crazy to people saying shit like that but obviously folks never factor in when they try to use that dismissive thing about oh you care about the economy it's like everything is linked to our economy your your uh your national defense your national health system, like your ability to care for your citizens is actively and super intertwined with your motherfucking money. You know, this is a, it's kind of a weird random thought, but I never thought growing up, you know, let's, let's say when I was 15, that when I was 30, 
I would have a different like reverence or appreciation for having grown up with an immigrant parent, having been to Mexico so many times, growing up in the country and literally doing all the quintessential Texan shit, riding horses, you know, building fences, all that stuff, because it puts a certain, and I know a lot of people listening can relate to it. And if you can't hear me out, because the people that don't relate are typically the people within those cities or in those states where they just have no, no way to, to just be like, I get what you're, where you're coming from, Texan or, you know, Alabaman or whatever, because they don't, they can't relate at all. Right. And it's almost like, unless you've had that type of experience, whether it's by like a family member or by your own family or yourself doing it, you can't relate to these people. And you're always just going to look down on those people that essentially just worked harder or worked more or did like physical labor shit. And you're just not going to understand. You're always going to talk to them as if they're the peasant. And I'm the, you know, the person from the city who's sitting on this chair or on this committee or whatever, that's going to tell you what's good for you. Yeah. Got a degree. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> like I know she graduated from like Stanford, I think, or something. And I understand she has immigrant parents, but at 27, you know, what, what have you ran a business? Have you actually gotten dirty in the, in the uh, private sector? Have you done anything other than get a degree? I know so many well-educated people who are the dumbest yeah. motherfuckers I've ever met. I, I think that's an excellent point, and um, I hope it don't like go over people's heads. But like, what, what I think what Rob's saying is, you're coming. Th- this Lena Hidalgo lady, <laughs> we've been going in on her. <laughs> go we, in. We're about to switch. But basically, I think you make a good point, which is like, some people become these career politicians where they know how to work the media and get write-ups and and tweet and shit like For that. For sure. However, how effective are you at your job if your life experience is pretty much, I went and got woke in college? Yeah. That don't impress me. Mm -hmm. That does not impress me. Getting a student debt, sure, fancy university, that's good. But if you just coming back with these brainwashed, woke, leftist, neo-Marxist ideas where you still think that looking into an election system is somehow white supremacy Trumpism then you are full of it. You, you're smarter than that. You're supposed to be, at least. Yeah, you're smarter than that, and everybody listening to the show is smarter than that. So don't let these wannabe career politicians uh, hit you with the okie doke thousand percent, and spin something to you. Like, I even tweeted um, Houston Chronicle. They, tw- they, they had a little article, and they're super lefty, and they were quoting Lena saying, uh, Texas is being run from Mar-a-Lago, and it's Trumpism, whoop de woop woo I retweeted it, and I put, cool opinion. <laughs> Like, you're trying to assign an opinion to people yeah. to, to be like, oh, look, it's the Houston Chronicle. It's the news. Oh, look, they said that Lena Hidalgo said that Texas is being run by Trump out of Mar-a-Lago. And then you got the normies that are like, hey, that's not cool. What is all this? Trump? Trump's a bad guy because the news told me that for four or five years. And I don't want my state being run by a bad guy who's orange. And then that's how, how simple some people think. They're like, the yeah. news just told me that this politician lady that's young and brown literally said that this orange man bad is running my state. Meanwhile, you have somebody like Obama. You've seen that video, right, where he says, like, the reporter asked him, you know, if you could have a third term, would you take it? And he's like, well, you know, if I could, if I could be in the put basement. A, put an earpiece. Yeah, put an earpiece in there. I was, you know, talk another ear from the basement and you didn't have to do anything. Yeah, you know, of course, or whatever. He was probably trying to be funny, but goddamn, man. Uh, it's the cabal. You know, it's the Uniparty, the party of devils. They don't care about the working class. It is so weird that a portion of the Republican Party has become the party of the working class. That is wild, man. That's what people don't realize. I think that's an important thing to try and get the word out to Latinos who maybe reply to my newsletter like, (laughs) hey, you fucking sell out, right? Fuck you, you sell out. You sided with the man who grabbed him by the pussy. And, <laughs> and, and, you know, his locker room talk, and he's mean, and he made fun of disabled people, and he called soldiers losers, and he said, drink bleach. All those people, it's like, if we could communicate to you that if you stand for the working class, for the deplorable, the, the Neanderthal, the, the regular person that wants to mind their business, they just want the kids to go to school and learn math and science and not all this weird shit. Well, here's, let's do this. What we should do in the future um, is that let's take compilations of you got people like Tucker Carlson, you got Matt Gates, you got Lauren Bobart, uh, Marjorie Taylor Greene, and then you take a compilation of Lena Hidalgo, Maxine Waters, AOC, and then we just play them side by side. Who's saying more things that is better for the greater good of your community, brown person or black person, even a white person, or your state or your country? Is it these four people or those four people? And why is it you think that the Marxist socialists over here 
have a better plan for you than this rich Tucker kid who had grew up a lot of money, went to a good school, or Matt Gates who grew up with money, went to a good school, but yet they're able to say things that make a lot more sense and should get you more excited about their ideas than the others. I think I heard Matt Gates voted for red flag law. I don't know. I may be wrong. That red did flag he? law is a... I don't know if he did, but Dan Crenshaw put out a tweet that uh, did made a lot of sense about what it was. Because it's one of those things where it was a dingleberry in this bigger military spending bill. And if they would have voted against it, they would have they would have essentially defunded the military, which he said, we're not going to do. So people were really... They were, they were making it very simple when it wasn't, like most things, right? So I didn't go deeper into it, but if that's what he says, and that's what I have to work with. People were saying, like, you voted against, or you voted for red flag laws, and then he says, calm down, if we would have voted against it, we would have been defunding our military. So when you hear it like that, you're like, okay, let me look further, because that makes sense. Yeah, it's one of those, by the way. Yeah. I don't know, maybe we need to ask uh, Jen, Jennifer, yeah. see if she read that one. So Biden's approval plummets once again. What happened, man? Some new polls came up? Yeah, I don't have those polls up. I just I think I put a note under it. Um, did I? And that's why we dropped the FJB shirt. <laughs> because it's more of us than it is, y'all. <laughs> I mean, hey, man, you know, 81 million people. Um, shit, I don't know if all 81 million still got his back. Yeah, so 40% of likely U.S. voters approve of Biden's, 40% likely voters approve of Biden's performance, which is a new low for his nine months in office, uh, which has created a year-long low of a negative 29, according to Rasmussen. I mean, do, we're not even surprised anymore. Like, yeah, can it go any lower? I feel like at a certain point, it's going to go so low that it's not going to report it anymore. Like, okay, we can't keep saying it's getting any lower. Well, um, for example, Steve Bannon and them, the reason they always pull up his approval ratings is because they they argue that it shows that he never really had the base or the support that they said he came in with. Meaning, there w- there were no eighty one million. Oh, okay. Number one, mm-hmm. that's part of it. And number two, they always keep an eye on like the independents, the people who are like, man, I'm not Democrat or Republican. I just kind of went with what I thought, and they're jumping ship even faster yeah so his entire credibility is on the line their whole administration is imploding not to mention kamala it's like team kamala and team biden supposedly according to jack posobic and his sources they're throwing a little shade on each other like they're kind of stabbing each other in the back Mm. like in other words they tried to throw the border problem on kamala and she was like bitch border uh what'd she say root causes she spun around that shit uh root causes well, you're supposed to figure out these root causes. You fuck it. You're the border czar or whatever. Yeah, yeah, I know. So, so she knew that was like a, a grenade. But supposedly Kamala's team, they call uh, Biden's administration, his team, the Titanic. Supposedly, allegedly, behind their back, they're calling him the Titanic. Bitch, and you're part of the Titanic. Yes, but she she's wanting to distance herself. So mm-hmm. in the beginning, it was Biden-Harris, Biden-Harris, Biden-Harris. She was always there in the pictures. A lot of times she was in the front. She was always walking next to him. Biden-Harris, Biden-Harris. Approval starts to plummet. Uh, according to some of these polls, she's more popular than him. Right. We, so, we said that. We read that last week. So they turn it good. So so uh, so they turn it into like, no, it's Biden. Mm. And we Harris. Like, you know what I mean? Basically getting ready to fall in line. And if, if he gets impeached or, I don't know, removed somehow. Name a band that did that. What was a duo that, what's a hip-hop duo you can think of or some duo that, like, did that where one of them pushed? Maybe Beyonce. Beyonce was like, no, it's Beyonce, now it's not Destiny's Child. I'm going solo, boo-boo. <laughs> uh, Harold Melvin in the Blue Notes. No, I'm just playing. Um, let me see. Motherfuckers that kind of go solo. Well, you see it a lot with, like, R&B groups and... Um, and like NSYNC, maybe? <laughs> Justin yeah, 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 yeah. Yep. Harris trying to pull a Justin Timberlake. <laughs> that's, a, that's a great way to look at it. That's hilarious. So, all right. So, look, man. The last point is New York creates the chaos. The substitute governor says, I got to do an emergency, state of emergency. Now I can bring in this National Guard and they're medically trained. And have you seen that clip of Biden? It's an old clip back when he could talk all badass. <laughs> and he was all like a smart ass. He says, even if... In the future, if there's a virus, have you seen that one? He's like, even if you, oh, yes. even if you cure the virus, he's like, you will implement certain mandates to where he said it's a. He was speaking clearer than a bitch. He was like, basically, you set up these parameters yeah. where you now are able to isolate yes. a part of your citizen, and now you and I was like, 
That had to have been like an 80s clip because he looked like a whole different person. That boy had buku energy. Yeah. Yeah, it looked like he could probably arm wrestle you a little bit. When he smiled, he didn't. his eyes didn't close. His you know? teeth weren't moving around in his mouth when he smiled. Him and Nancy must have the same dentist. <laughs> <laughs> so here. <laughs> and you know what? God did answer our prayers. He made the smartest men and women, the scientists, the doctors, the researchers. He made them come up with a vaccine. That is from God to us. And we must say thank you, God. Thank you. And I wear my vaccinated necklace all the time to say I'm vaccinated. <laughs> all of you. Yes, I know you're vaccinated. You're the smart ones. But you know there's people out there who aren't listening to God and what God wants. You know this. They're you know not they listening to God. I need you to be my apostles. <laughs> I need you to go out and talk about it and say we owe this to each other. We love each other. <laughs> Jesus taught us to love one another. And how do you show that love but to care about each other enough to say, please get vaccinated because I love you. I want you to live. I want our kids to be safe when they're in Bro, school. Cut her off. Cut her off. That's cut her a New York off. governor. Oh, my <laughs> God. Okay. Sam Tripoli posted some really good uh, memes uh, on the tinfoil hat page or his page. And it was like science and then scientism. Mm. So scientism <clears throat> is more like it's saint fauci and you you're more of like a religion where you're basically like only looking up data that backs up your side like everything you believe is science everything else is a social construct everything you disagree with is a social construct so this scientism forgets that questioning science is science correct like there's a meme it's a i think it's skeletor Oh like, yeah, where he yeah. like walks up and it's like questioning science is science, and then he's walking yeah. away <laughs> and it says more next time or some yeah. shit like that. These memes are great, um, and then it was also a meme the one that was like there's science and there's scientism, and it's it's Corona, it's the little Corona uh, drawing, the the little circle with the the crowns all over it, and uh, they put it over the the dude's face on um, I, Irish. Look at me, Irish. I'm the re I'm a religion now. Oh, I don't know that. So, so okay, uh, the Tom Hanks movie when they get hijacked by the Somalians on the boat, mm -hmm. the meme of the, of the black dude. Yes. I think he's like Somalian. Okay. And he, he tells Tom Hanks, Irish, look at me, Irish. I'm, he said, the meme was, I'm, the, I'm a religion now. Oh, that's funny. Yeah. Because so, it is. It's a cult of Corona. And, bro, it's like three memes from Tripoli all in one. So he, I think he put this other meme where it basically said, first they'll like, shame you then they'll bully you then they'll force you then they'll you know what i mean and now they're literally using religion to cajole you persuade you force you trick you make you uh, guilt you shame you mm -hmm. how about just give a motherfucker some science yeah. can you just communicate some real good data to me because i'm looking at a world where Y'all paying influencers. Uh, De La Hoya in there talking about he got it. Rogan beat it real quick. Chris Rock went to the hospital. Some people didn't. Just vitamins, push-ups, kettlebell swings, ivermectin. Um, <laughs> again, I don't know what works, but I look at y'all's efficacy rate. We understand what's going on with VARES. We've been looking at this Project Veritas stuff. We heard what the employees of, of Johnson & Johnson said. The, the employees on, from the HHS, the FDA... They dropping these Project Veritas dropping tapes like mixtapes, and it's it's like battle raps. They expose in the whole narrative. Like you're not crazy for questioning it. A lot of bad shits happening is getting unreported, and I am not anti-vax. I got all kind of vaccines, um, but you know. Yeah, and shout out, you know, Sam Tripoli. He goes hard in the paint on social media, and thanks to his fans, you know, and his you know Patreon and Rockfin and all that. That's and obviously go out to watch him at live shows. He can risk all of his accounts because he's he's gotten like this is like his third Twitter account and third Instagram like like the Sam Tripoli account isn't anymore. He, then he had another one. Now it's like at Fat Dragon or whatever his nickname yeah, is on the production. Yeah, because yeah. he posts all this stuff that's hilarious, gets a lot of traction, gets a lot of eyeballs, makes sense, and then they're like, now we're gonna do away with you. So if it wasn't for his fans, you know, Sam would probably be in a bad place. But because fans love what he's talking about, they support him. Yeah, they find him, they tune in. So. That's why the newsletter is important. That's why our Patreon is important. Yep. Support direct, you know. Uh, but yeah, man, we appreciate that. So very interesting situation. Uh, obviously, New York Governor Cuomo got ousted. They kicked him out. 
which is a perfect opportunity for a substitute governor who might be down with the program. I don't know if Cuomo was, you know, I speculate like, okay, was Cuomo not going to force certain things or he wasn't really with it or he knew too much or whatever it mm-hmm. was. And it's very convenient that the left ate its own on that one. And then well, his brother, I know we're wrapping up, but his brother just got me too yesterday. Yeah. Yeah. Some accusations mm-hmm. from a, a what, like a coworker. A, it was somebody it was from somebody's a, a wife. network. Yeah. Oh. Somebody's wife. God, in damn. front of him wow yeah in front of him yeah yeah what? so it's not allegations it's basically true so and who, also so who won that fight that's a good point <laughs> yeah exactly what would you yeah exactly let's not even get into what would happen if that I'd, happens in i'd person. have been i'd have been like nah baby man he tripping man you know let's go over here <laughs> man chris cuomo tripping <laughs> It's like he be working out too much, man. Like he tri- <laughs> man, he on steroids, baby. He don't know what he doing. You didn't see him pressing that hundred hundred pound dumbbell over his head like yeah. nothing. Yeah, fake weights. So yeah, man. Um, state of emergency. Keep an eye on New York. And it just so happens this is another arguably very lefty, progressive run state. It's another blue state. Why isn't as much shit that people talk about DeSantis and I know Abbott. Even a lot of Republicans don't like Abbott. But as much shit as they talk about these red states and these red state governors, why don't you ever hear none of this shit happening? Like, oh, DeSantis called state of emergency because he got to fire 76,000 nurses and shit tonight over a mandate. DeSantis talking about the vaccine is from God and y'all, God going to be mad at you if you don't get the vaccine. And y'all are the smart ones because I know y'all got it. Look, man, DeSantis, DeSantis makes a lot of sense. Wheels needs to get with the program because uh, Alan West and a couple of other people that are running make some very good, compelling points. Yes. I don't care what Alan West Bro. or the other gentleman is, black, Mexican, whatever, fucking alien from outer space, he's making sense. Bro, Alan West said, we are going to categorize the cartels as transnational Terrorist. Uh, terrorist criminal organizations mm-hmm. and he says now we have the opportunity to seize bank accounts here in, in texas mm-hmm. um if you're working in texas for the cartel and you're doing work doing dirt for the cartel you are now running risk of saying bitch you are aiding and abetting a terroristic group colonel allen west wow making sense yeah man i'm like why ain't nobody else ever did this shit Matter of fact, why the fuck Trump ain't ever did this shit? Trump should have been did that. Mexico, I'm putting sanctions on you. Uh, we we considering these motherfuckers because they got all the weapons in the world. All these cartels got buku money, buku influence. They're terrorizing people over there. And arguably they help people over there too. But it's like y'all control the border. Y'all working with the CCP. Y'all killing Americans with the fentanyl. Y'all trafficking women and kids. Uh... Guess what, bitch? You are now labeled a terrorist group. You know, we didn't talk a whole lot about uh, big tech in this episode, but again, going back to the newsletter and social media and a lot of things we talk about gets suppressed on big tech, right? So it, it's it's a battle of like where can we divert people's ears and eyes to on the internet and online that's going to win this culture war, this you know civilish type of war that we're talking about? Because when it comes to like weapons, whether it's a cartel in Mexico or the United States or China or Russia, you know. We have the most weapons. We have the most nuclear arms next to uh, Russia. Taliban. <laughs> well, yeah, exactly. Russia to China and then the Taliban probably. But it's about where the, all this information is going to online, right? So stay in touch. Make sure you're following people. I get messages every day. I tried to tag out what did he said. I was like, yeah, it's been months. You can't tag it anywhere. And that's why I signed up on Getter. Uh, oh, yeah. I, I, I just, signed up on the, uh, just signed up on the Getter app. So far, so good. Uh, we'll see. If anybody wants to join and follow me and shit on there, uh, supposedly they don't censor you the way Twitter would or, Mm. you know, delete you or put you in Twitter jail. So the app is G-E-T-T-R. It was started by, um, what's his name? What's his name? Jason Miller, I believe his name is. Used to be like a Trump advisor, but he started it. All the conservative people on there, they call it the Twitter killer. Hmm. get her the Twitter killer. And I think there's a way you could transfer over all your tweets. Hmm. So I need to figure that out. But or just start from scratch with what Twitter Twitter tweets, yeah. But they, oh, like don't bring over tweets, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah, I know, but I don't know if there's a way to just link them or something. I I don't know, okay. But, um, the todos modos, Rob is absolutely right. These are strange times. There's look into this thing, it's called Pegasus Software, it's like some spyware shit that Mm. supposedly got installed on like damn near all the phones, right? And somebody can 
pretty much spy on you, hack you, and then sell your information to the highest bidder. It could be um, no telling who. Yeah, it's been happening forever. Yeah, no telling who might want some of your info. But um, China. Yeah, ain't no telling, right? Other political parties, or yeah. other politicians you talk about on your podcast. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but uh, but but just to reiterate Rob's point, man, these are very interesting times when, like, I get it. These are private corporations. They can shadow ban who they want. You're on their platform. They can set up whatever community guidelines they want. They're very smart. They got a lot of lawyers. They'll figure out a way to not make it look like they're in cahoots with the government and they're silencing free speech. Uh, but it is what it is. So that's why we re-emphasize the newsletter, the Patreon. Come to a show, Freedom of Speech Tour. Yeah, and we're gonna we're gonna put something together too, as far as email wise. I know a lot of people might think that like email's dead, but if you have a small business or you have some some kind of project, build an email list. I've been ch- telling Chingo this for years, and I'm glad that there is an email list that we started building a long time ago. Uh, we're gonna do the same thing with Patreon because honestly, when we if it's not an if it's not a podcast and it's a regular post, I don't know how Patreon's analytics work. But it's all like in beta and you, do, you can't really tell like if it's working or not because I, you, literally I'm telling this is for ma- mainly the patrons. But like maybe you don't see a post or maybe you don't get the notification sometimes. It's similar to like YouTube where like they, they say hit the bell notification. But a lot of times that shit doesn't even work. Same thing mm. for Instagram. So we're going to have a, a list with our patrons as well to keep in touch. So if you see it on Patreon, awesome. If you see it on email as well, great. But you might only see it on the email just because sometimes this shit just don't work. Well, Rob is a genius at being able to manage all of this shit, managing multiple email lists. So thank you guys so much for the support. Y'all be safe. Have a good one. I'll see you in Dallas, October 7th through the 10th. Uh, Chingoblin.com. Sass.